Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Home Buyer Club podcast with me, Joe Thompson. Today, we have Chris Webb from the Estate Agency Consultants. It's the Estate Agent Consultancy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't want to correct you there, but it is the Estate Agent, singular, singular Estate Agent Consultancy, but we are, it's tomato, tomato, it's all in the same world, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Joe, it's right there on the, on the top right of your screen as well, and I, I got a little there, Yeah, moment. yeah, the glue was there the whole time. <laughs> oh, it's great having you back on. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for asking me back on. It's uh, um, I, I don't think I mentioned this before, but um, actually, my one of the reels you took off our last podcast is my top rated, top viewed um, piece of content on Instagram. So uh, you're a famous man on my Instagram account. So people want more of you and less of me, apparently. So uh, there we are. Here I am again. So here we are again. Let's try and get. Let's try and beat it this time, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. I've got no more stories about the police trying to arrest me. So um, ah, okay. I, I might have peaked to that one. Yeah. So that's you've not not got into trouble with the police. We last spoke now no no i've been very good been very well behaved as always <laughs> uh, so how's business been since last time we spoke really good thank you very much yeah really busy which is great um working all over the country at the moment i've got some potential overseas clients lined up as well which is great thank goodness for video calls um and uh yeah it's going well so um, i'm coming towards the end of my first six months of the estate and consultancy which some of my first clients are coming towards the end of their first six months uh, with my business and everyone i've spoken to so far has renewed for another six months so that's a, a good sign so positive steps that's brilliant oh congratulations i bet the six months has been grown as well hasn't it it is yeah it's terrifying uh, even the, the weeks and the months at the moment are flying by i sound really old when i say that but the weeks and months are flying by and the thing that i've been um you know running the business for six months now or pretty much six months is uh terrifying so uh yeah certainly flying by far quicker than i would have expected but it's all been really good it's good to be busy yeah very much so very much so. and i saw as well over a thousand followers on instagram it's a big map. yeah indeed yeah so um I, I wanted to join Instagram for a long period of time. And the thing that pushed me to join Instagram was that I got a shadow banned from LinkedIn uh, for doing something wrong. That The algorithm said Chris has been doing this. And I went from getting, I don't know, a couple of thousand views, should we say, a couple of thousand impressions on my Instagram post. I think one got 13. <laughs> so a bit, a bit of a drop off there. Uh, so I emailed the guys over at LinkedIn saying, What's going on here? Why is this dropped off so much? And they say, Oh, you've been put on a bit of a blacklist for a period of time because of X, Y, and Z. And I thought, Oh, thank you very much. So, uh, probably time to diversify my social media input oh. slightly. So, uh, joined, joined Instagram uh, a few months ago. And yeah, up, up at 1.2K followers, which is pretty cool. So, it's always the thing, isn't it? I, I thought to myself, Race, I want to get to a thousand followers. I think that sounds really good. I've got to a thousand. I'm like, 2000 is the new 1000. So, I'll, I'll never be happy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> always under the next one absolutely isn't it? absolutely <laughs> we always <love> them all. <laughs> well i want to sort of speak to you today uh obviously the podcast is moving to, more towards helping people within the industry uh and a big thing um is fact promotion from a state agent's point of view promoting financial services uh, absolutely so just wanted to have a chat to you about that yep and I, I would say that it's probably the biggest open goal for most estate businesses throughout the UK and I hasn't to guess internationally that financial services can be an enormous income stream into your business. So one of my personal goals um, with the last company I worked for was to get one of my offices to earn more from financial services than it was from a state agency. Wow. And one month I was so close that I really frustrated. It wasn't like a public site. It was just something I wanted to do because I thought I could do it sort of thing. And so that is a goal as an estate agency business you should pretty much be earning as much from financial services as you are from selling properties that is, so I that is that's massive isn't it and i bet people listening yeah. to this are thinking sure chris like that can't be done but if you were that close yeah. to doing it that's phenomenal well i've always said that the average for every property you bring on the market you should earn a thousand pounds worth of additional income off the back of it so let's say for example you're you know in part of the world where average fee is two two and a half thousand pounds or so and you're selling 50 percent of your stock you're almost there already with that figure without being particularly remarkable on that side so the line of sound i've always said if you can get a thousand pounds of third-party income whether that's um, mortgages or solicitors off the back of it as well um off of that property you're doing a good job that's yeah that's really good and i guess as well you know when you bring a property on there's only ever going to be one buyer you know absolutely but there's going to be plenty of opportunity to earn uh from referrals because absolutely viewers sellers um they're always going to need a more mostly going to need a mortgage and if they don't buy that one they'll buy another property 
absolutely and you've got to think that as an estate agent you come into contact with so many people from so many different walks of life and let's say you put property for sale today let's pick a nice round figure you might get five viewings on it you might get 10 viewings on it for example but these are all people that statistically probably will need to get a mortgage when they're buying the property especially if it's a certain style of property if it's a starter home then absolutely if it's a large bungalow then maybe not potentially but so there's a huge marketplace out there for people to inquire about the mortgages and from an estate agent point of view is not a lot of extra effort you know for, for in most situations all it entails is saying to them what have you got done about your mortgage would you like to save some money and that's pretty much the conversation for 30 seconds or so on a viewing or on a valuation and then you you know text it to someone like yourself joe or send a voice note to someone like yourself joe and then you jump on it and you do all the hard work and you just get some money turned up in six months time yeah. cool that's great so for 30 seconds to a minute extra on your appointment you might have earned 200 quid now that is good business that is very good business isn't it yeah yep there we are i was going to ask why should they do it and then anyone listening there you are <laughs> well, <laughs> that is, that, why that is literally the reason why so you know it's a it purely goes on the bottom line of your business because you know, you know you as a mortgage advisor joe if i referred across to you i don't pay for your electric bill i don't pay for your gas bill i don't pay for the you know the roof above your head or anything like that at all it's purely positive so all you're ever going to send me is money back in my direction why wouldn't i pass stuff back to you you know the only way is up as far as i was saying yeah exactly yeah it's a, it's a business relationship uh and over time the trust element it builds even more and, and I, I get some people might have reservations about referring to people they don't know i get i get that but uh it surely it shows credibility to you as a an estate agent that you are referring to a, a, a mortgage advisor a good mortgage advisor yep absolutely so you need to have a a good advisor goes without saying because yeah. absolutely right that reflects on you and your brand so you might be the best estate agent in the world but you refer over to a Try not to use the word dodgy, but not very good mortgage advisor. Shit one. Who is this? <laughs> yeah, can we swear? A shit one. You're very across to a shit one. And that makes you look rubbish off the back of it. Yeah. So that is not where you want to be. But if you've got a solid relationship with somebody, you go, right, you know, Joe's a safe pair of hands and I can just pass these across to them. Cool. Great. Thank you very much. Oh, Joe was great. He called me up straight away and he's jumped on it. He's all over it. Actually, that boosters your offering because they see that as part of your service as well. So although it can sort of drag you down if they're a bad one, it can also push you up if they're a good one Absolutely. as well yeah that's it that, and that goes for any third party referral i guess isn't it um, absolutely definitely yeah well no, no. uh do you get much pushback you know when you're speaking to estate agents and talking about financial services do you get much pushback uh on any common sort of concerns they have so the expression i hear quite a lot of is i know i should huh. i know i should do more financial services i know i should ask the question more and i know i should investigate this more and i know i should earn more money from it um so it's not a hidden secret um in a state agency business that you know there is a lot of money to be earned for financial services it is just asking the question and for me i always find it a bit funny uh, there's this little internal joke i have myself so estate agents are very happy to say to people can i come and value your property they're very happy to say oh can i come around and see your property see what you've got there see your kitchen and see your bathroom so basically what you're saying in that situation me as a complete stranger i'm going to come around your house i'm going to look where you eat look where you sleep at night and i'm going to look around your entire property and judge it and give it the value of that property so that is less scary apparently than saying can i save you some money <laughs> so that is literally how it is so which one is easier those conversations is easier can i come and stalk around your house and have a look where you sleep and where you eat and you know <laughs> see how you decorate and tidy up and meet your dog and whatever else or can i try and save some cash for me it's a far easier conversation just to say would you like to save some money on your mortgage yeah yeah <laughs> cool okay great yeah exactly yeah gosh it's, and it's just 30 seconds less than 30 seconds isn't it just ask that question yeah absolutely it's so it's it, it's a bigger deal in your mind than it is in reality people think oh I, I don't want to ask about finances and that's that's personal and we're british we don't talk about money and whatever oh, it may no, be no. i mean mortgage literally means death pledge that is literally a translation from french mortgage mortgage death pledge in french so if i was doing anything and signing up to anything which the word is called death pledge you better bet your bottom dollar that I'm going to shop around for the best possible deal for my death yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that was what it was what it translated to there we go every day's a school day God, I might start wearing a a, a black hug and <laughs> start wearing a, a grim reaper <laughs> yeah well it, it, it is Friday the 13th we're recording this so there yeah. we go it all lines up yeah it does <laughs> so 
getting these people, getting estate agencies to start uh, asking the question and positioning it with clients. How do you? How have you found is best to do that? I I get asked this. Yep. I've been asked this before. How would you do it? How do you do it, Joe? Yep. And my answer is always, I've never gone to. I've never been an estate agent to say, yep. this is what I do. Um, so how would you position it if you were? Okay, well, I've got I've got some good news. I'm a multi award winning financial services. I've got. They were trophies. I'm sure my mum's got them probably still. They're like various certificates and trophies yeah. and whatever, maybe all that, all that sort of stuff. You go oh, great at the time, but you go straight under the bed, sort of thing. So, did you make uh, it? I've done a lot of this. Did I make it on what? Sorry, on Canva. Did you make it on Canva? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I, I think Canva was even a thing back then. Oh. Was probably a, a distant thought. I show my age. Um, so for me, job number one if you're not asking the question, just ask the question. So it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what question it is. You can say a phrase that however you like, have you many, how many mortgage advisors have you spoken to? What have you done about your mortgage so far? Have you got your mortgage sorted even, which we're going to come on to very shortly, which is not a very good way of saying it. But if you ask a question and actually just bring the subject up, you will trip over some. Yeah. It might be one in a hundred. It might be one in 50. But if you don't ask, you don't get. So that is lesson number one is that everyone you deal with just have a conversation with the guards about mortgages that's it you'll, you'll fall over some people when you think to yourself actually well i actually could do it yeah great you can sign it yes you can come in yes i do need mortgage advice great fantastic that's but if you don't ask for it you'll never know so that is probably lesson number one so everyone you come into contact with just ask a question yeah good bad ugly doesn't really make a difference but it's better than not asking a question at all the trap that lots will fall into, and I'm going to slightly um, stereotype this, is generally junior staff fall into this who are um, pressurised by their bosses or whatever it may be to ask about financial services. And they say, they say to people, have you got your mortgage sorted? So people will phone up and they'll go, oh, I want to buy a house and what sort of budget are you looking up to? Great. Well, have you got your mortgage sorted? And funny enough, everyone says yes. Yeah. And then they turn around and go, cool. Okay, that's the end of that conversation. Then I asked the question. I gave it a go, and I I I, I keep my boss happy because I said, "Yeah, asked about the mortgage," and I didn't want to go for it because I've got it all sorted. Well, how have they got it sorted? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so but that is probably the most common or second most common, uh, along with not asking the question whatsoever. What you want to do is give yourself ammunition for what they've done so far, because one person's "I've sorted my mortgage" is go and speak to their bank. For another person, it was to speak to their grandma. For other people, it's go on to money saving expert or go on to Google and have a look around sort of thing. So the more information you can get from someone about what they've done so far, the more ammo you've got to go back with. They're basically kind of digging your sales pitch for you by giving you more information. So the question is, you know, you're looking up to 300,000 pounds. How have you got to that figure would be a good place to start. So we've got to that figure by going to see my bank. Oh, cool. great. That's fantastic. That's more information for us. Thank you very much. Or, um, you know, what have you done about your mortgage so far? Who have you spoken to so far? Oh, well, I've spoken to the bank. So the same, it's the same question, effectively, phrased in a slightly different way, but we know what they've done so far. So a, a penny should sort of drop in your mind that goes, right, they've been to see the bank. So how can we overcome this objection? Right. So question for you. How many mortgages did the guys at the Halifax offer you? Oh, well, they had, they had three mortgages. They had their fixed rate, they had their tracker, and they had their variable. Great. Okay, that sounds good. So well done for the work you've done so far. Um, I've got a mortgage advisor who has 17,000 mortgages available to him as an option. Um, do you reckon you're going to save more money on the, with the 17,000 or with the three? Probably the 17,000. Yeah, it's probably worth him giving you a call to see me save some money, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, great. The, the easiest way to do it, and as a default position, you should be asking questions where people feel stupid yes. saying no. So the worst case scenario, if I said, no, I see here you're saying about your mortgage and you've been to the bank so far, out of interest, would you be interested if I could save you some money on your mortgage? Yeah, definitely. You Because you would feel like an idiot saying yeah. no. If you weren't actually, no, saving money, that's overrated, yeah. actually spend it away. Who wants to do that? <laughs> Or Joe, if we, if we can get you a better term on your mortgage, Joe, would you be interested in paying off your mortgage a couple of years earlier? Yeah. 
No, actually, I fancy staying in mortgage debt for a few yeah. extra years. And actually, I fancy paying all that interest. Thank you very much. Well, I learned so... what mortgage meant. So it's about death play. You know, <laughs> till death do us part. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, there's so many options ahead of you to ask the question. But in reality, the the main objections you're going to get on the way back of it is I've been to see my bank or I've been to see a financial advisor or I've been to see multiple financial advisors or I spoke to a friend of mine as a financial advisor. It's always amazing when you're oh, talking to clients and if, if you speak to someone in the high street and say, how many financial advisors do you know? And they go, none. But anyone who's looking to buy a house, suddenly it's like the Tinder of oh. the world. Like everyone knows everybody. Everyone knows the financial advisor all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. So phrase it in a way to find out what they've done so far. Great. Take that information on board and have a sales pitch for each one of those options going forward. Let's say, for example, they turn around, they say, I've been to see five financial advisors who are all independent financial advisors and they've done this, they've done that, they've checked these sort of things. Wow, you've done a really good job there. Would you like to compare them to make sure you've got the best rate going? Mm, yeah, I would. Okay, cool. Great. They'll get to give you a call. And that's probably the hardest objection you'll get to overcome. Yeah. That is probably going to be one in 10. I'm probably going to come up against that. But the majority of them are going to say to you, I've been to see my bank or I've been to see two banks so far. Great. Well, we can look into this. We can look into that. Would you like to save some money? These guys will give you a call and they'll chat you through it. I love that. I love that. And and do you know what? You know, I found at times where I've had people come through and it's a case of, okay, they want to check they've got the best rate. Nine times out of 10, these people no like, or I say no like and trust me, they like and trust me from their first initial conversation enough to go, mm-hmm. actually, this guy seems a good guy. We'll stick with him. We'll go with him. Because it's not all about always about like the cheapest fee or or whatever it's, it's yeah. about having that warm fuzzy feeling a mortgage is a big commitment it's a big yep. big ass loan at the end of the day uh yep. and it's scary buying a house for the first time even the second time is scary you know mm-hmm. so having someone you feel comfortable with asking stupid questions that's what you want um mm-hmm. funnily enough i've just uploaded a uh, uh, a podcast about why i do everything on video call and that is mainly because I can speak to someone um, directly, can see who I am, and that builds trust. If you do it on a phone, you're just a, a you're just a phone. Absolutely. Yep. So I'm I'm listening to well, I'm actually listening to it for the second time. I've got a Daniel, Daniel Priestley book I'm reading through for the second time at the moment, or listening to because I don't like reading um, for the second time. And an, a chapter in that is basically chatting all about how the human brain doesn't know the difference between real life and digital. So if I see a lot of Joe over video call. I think I know Joe, I like Joe, I trust Joe, as if you were sat next to me. Yeah. So we don't differentiate between them. And I see you for hours and hours. I think I've chatted you for an hour, which is why people meet their celebrities and they're like, oh my goodness, Ronaldo, I love you. Yeah. You're amazing. I've seen so much of you. Like We're best mates sort of thing. And Ronaldo's thinking, who the hell is this guy chatting to me? Mm-hmm. Because he's never seen you. Yeah. So absolutely that connection is built, whether it's video or real life, the connection is far better than it would be over a phone call. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's that's good. Daniel, I've heard about this guy, Daniel Priestley, did you say? I'm, I'm going to have to find his audience. Yep. Yeah, he's got a few. So um, I'm, well, I've am i read already Key Person of Interest, and the other one I'm working through is, gosh, I really know what it is, actually. I'm halfway through reading it. I'll, I'll let right, you know. Send me the link, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I've forgotten the title. So I'm really paying attention to that one. As, as, as we said earlier, it's quite early when I go for a walk in the morning when I listen to audiobooks. So sometimes not fully awake, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me, I love it. Yeah, the the morning walks are, are very difficult at the moment for me. For me, anyway, it's being so dark. I struggle to get out of bed when it's dark. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was listening to a podcast a while ago, and they said the best thing you can do to start your day is literally jump out of bed as quick as you possibly can. So lots of people, you know, roll over five more minutes and whatever else it may be. So I try as much as I possibly can do. As soon as that alarm goes off turn it off and I wouldn't say jump out of bed because it's quite early in the morning still, but I will excitedly roll out of bed um, as quick as I possibly can and get on my feet as quick as I possibly can. And then I'm up, it's done, away we go. Sort of thing. <laughs> Have you seen those alarm clocks that are like natural light and they, they brighten up slowly? I ha- I say I have one. I, I don't have one. My partner has one. I bought it for her birthday or Christmas, I think, last year. Uh, it's really good. So it's actually really nice. And it's, it's um, so you have a, a morning setting and an evening setting as well. So yeah, it goes from red through to blinding light to wake you up in the morning and then birds cheap and whatever else at the end of it. 
Um, and in the evening, you do it in reverse. So in the evening, you go to bed and, and I read your book or whatever you do. And it goes dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until you eventually go, I can't read my book. I'm going to sleep now. So really good. Would recommend. Good. Quite expensive. They're like 80 quid or something, but I would definitely do it. Right. I know that for a fact that if I had that at five o'clock in the morning or half past five when my alarm goes off, my wife will be, whoosh. <laughs> <Get elbow. laughs> <Get elbow. laughs> yeah, exactly. Get away, turn that light off. <laughs> Rightly so. Rightly so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So on the on the flip side of, of everything we've kind of said, uh, talking about selling financial services and, and the importance uh, of, of doing that, um, there are times and you hear horror stories of some, some bit, well, not necessarily bigger brands, a lot of different, uh, maybe smaller ones too, condition and selling. Uh, mm. what, what, what are your thoughts on, on that? um first of all i think it's illegal um second, yeah. <laughs> second of all um, num number one um second of all it's it's like lazy salesmanship is is probably the best way of putting it because yeah. anybody can railroad someone into doing something they go you have to do this if you want to buy this house or you have to do this or you're not buying it or i'm not putting you off a forward or i'm not doing that or i'm not doing this sort of thing anybody can do it it's just again i won't swear i'll say lazy to put it polite yeah but it, it, you know if you're product and your um, salesmanship and your pitch and everything you're trying to sell somebody is so bad that actually your usp is i'm going to strong arm you in to do this because i've got nothing else to go forward with it then that isn't great so i had an experience uh, a little while ago well i think quite a little while ago it's probably about five ten years ago now so quite a while ago where i was looking to buy a property and it was through a uh, rather large national chain um, who are quite renowned for doing this sort of thing should we say knew who i was knew what i did knew what i was about so it wasn't like i was like you know i didn't say to keep quiet about i work in the estancy world and this is what i do sort of thing the chap i spoke to on the viewing knew exactly who i was exactly what I, kind of career wise etc so it should be quite clued up on that side um phoned me for the feedback on the viewing and tried to do exactly that and tried to go i know you've got you mentioned your own mortgage right, but you need to see our guy and you need to do this and this is what you need to go down and you have to do this and i could almost hear the managing director at the back of the office basically telling him what to do and actually I felt a bit sorry for the guy because yeah. I felt that he didn't, you could hear it in his voice. He didn't really want to be doing it. He didn't believe in it in any way, shape or form, but he's got his boss at the back of the room going, get on the phone. You need to get appointments. You need to fill up my spreadsheet for the day that I set off the head office, etc." And it was just rubbish again, to put it polite. And I felt, I literally said to him, look, mate, no matter what you say right now, this is what's going to happen. And this is what's not going to happen sort of thing. I appreciate what you're saying. If you want me to have a chat with your boss, I'll quite happily have a chat with your boss. I can hear in the background, but it's not happening. Yeah. So it just, you know, save your breath, give up now because you know, there is nothing you can say to me right now that is going to make me do yeah. that. You know, if you want me to go through an offer check process, great. You can speak to my financial advisor. He'll give you a call. He'll chat you through it. No problems at all. Anything more than that, you're not getting from yeah. me. So, yeah, it's um, it is lazy salesmanship ultimately. And if they have a better product and a better training behind the scenes, who will want your product and they want to see your financial advisor, they want to save money and work with you because you do a great service, not because they have to, and because you kind of kick them in the yeah. back. I, I hate, I hate hearing, uh, oh, our our vendor wants you to speak to and deal with our mortgage advisor why would that because that, that comes up all the that comes up all the time doesn't it the vendors go yeah. um how do you offer check your guys and are they going to speak to your in-house advisor that question is asked yeah. all the time on on appointments so yeah that is just a a badly weighted question that is aimed at i don't say gullible people but it is pretty much aimed at gullible people who go oh really that's interesting they obviously have a connection with your financial services guy that is so good they said if it's not checked via Daniel at so and so, then I'm not going for it. Not in a million years. Yeah. It's just lazy salesmanship. Yeah. Well, one one that used to get me in. I think it, the the intention of the estate agent was was good. Uh, just a tactic to get people in, but I I hated it. I used to shake my head. Like, Don't do this. When they used to say, "Oh yeah, our mortgage advice. Like he's like our mortgage advisors. Like compare the market. So you'll compare the market to find the best rate for you." And I was like. No, <laughs> you can't say that. because yeah. and Paul, like he, he he does know, um, but some people don't know that it's not always the cheapest rate, and the cheapest Absolutely. lender is not always the best lender for the client because of their circumstances, the property they're buying, whatever. So yep. for a mortgage advisor, it's finding the best lender for their needs. Yep. 
Absolutely. Otherwise, you would literally go onto your platform, go, this is their deposit, order by price, starting lowest rate, first of all, right? That's the top of the list. Tick that box, submit. Thank you very much. Job done. You yeah. literally would become the Google of mortgages. Yeah, it'd be so easy. My job would be if it was like that. <laughs> every bank which, with every client. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely. Which one should I go for? Well, which one's the top of the list today? Yeah, you that's the one. Most. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. If, if anyone's got any questions about how to pitch financial yeah. services, where can they reach mm -hmm. you? So best place to go to is going to my website, which is estateaidandconsultancy.com. You can, there's a message me section on there. You can message me and DM me on uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. I don't, I'm not a big fan of Facebook, no. so I probably don't do that one. I just don't like it. Um, we need to get up to um, 2,000 followers. So guys, get on and follow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Let's get on it sort of thing. So yeah, you can DM me on many, many platforms. I try and have an omnipresent marketing um, strategy which means i'm hopefully everywhere so anywhere you go try and find me uh, i'm not on tiktok i'm not that young and i'm not that cool um, <laughs> to be on tiktok but outside of that i should be on pretty much everything else oh, that's good and maybe that's something that we can discuss at a later date being omnipresent as an estate agent oh there we go absolutely like absolutely so i think and one thing we haven't spoken about today that is i think absolutely crucial and one of the reasons that i always felt the value of having a good connection sit with a, a financial advisor is actually control in the process as well so although there's a monetary side of mm -hmm. things that's great okay. and that's good to get paid never wants to have a good paycheck and get money out the mail from joe and that's all good sort of thing um also if you ever get anything that goes wrong or any kind of issues or you're chasing up a mortgage or there's some sort of speed bump in the road it is so much easier just to text somebody and go, Joe, what's going on with this, mate? And you just send a voice note back in two minutes' time. This is going on. That's going on. Do us a favor. Chase that up. All you need to do this for yeah. sort of thing. So having that relationship and having a control over the entire process is worth its weight in gold. So the commission is great, and that's really good. The other part of it is actually you're trying to get this sale across the line that's worth three, four, five, six, seven thousand pounds for yourself. And if you've got someone you can pick up the phone to and go, what's going on, mate? What can we do to fix this problem? That is priceless i would say yes yeah completely agree and it, and going back to the liking someone and having trust with someone trust that they're going to reply to your message straight away and put you in the picture and, and let you know what's going on um absolutely that open yeah. line of communication is, is so valuable isn't it absolutely any any estate agent who does their own sales progression should be nodding along right now and going yes absolutely i would love to be able to text somebody rather than phoning a solicitor at you know two o'clock on a friday and oh no sorry they've left for the day they're going to play golf and you think oh thank you very much that's really good Brilliant. team effort there sort of thing yeah. or yet yeah, leave five messages and you never hear back or you get an email once a week off the back of them you know that communication is absolutely key and as we said about earlier if you've got that relationship there it makes you look better because you can go right leave it with me i'll message joe now you come back to me in five minutes this is what's going on with it this is the problem this is the hold up this is what we need to do yeah. whereas if you wait for two days three days four days it looks bad on you yeah it does doesn't it yeah it really does and i think as well in this process all roads lead back to the estate agent most of the time yeah, 100 so yeah you know they are they are the fall guy or girl um or they yeah. so you know they that might have They'll always come back and go hold on a sec <laughs> bra, bra, bra. And you're like, absolutely you are you are the messenger absolutely right and that yeah. is you know everyone says don't shoot the messenger but as estate agents you get shot on a regular basis unfortunately yes, and unfortunately so. that's probably why you know if i was gonna you know the like elephant in the room when it comes to estate agency estate agents have a bad reputation um and that is generally because you're the messenger and you are the easy full guy between the two and you know those meddling estate agents wanted to get as much money and get another offer out of me as much get as much as possibly could sort of thing really you've got a vendor behind the scenes going chris get me as much money as possible drink me get me another five grand what can you get from those guys yeah. and you are the messenger or the property falls through you're the guy that phones up and says they've just changed their mind because of whatever reason because it's a wednesday today and therefore they've changed their mind and i'm the one that looks stupid yeah. so yeah very much so so that is positive and negative as well yeah yeah i'd, I'd love to know uh how the um people's thoughts about estate agents has changed over time because personally i i mean working closely with the states i feel that the uh, everyone's thoughts about them are, are getting better um yep. And I think maybe with the introduction of the likes of EXP and Keller Williams, et cetera, and the more independent bespoke estate agents coming around, I feel like there's there's better lines of communication 
um, with, yep. with with vendors and buyers. Yep. I think so. And I think that there's, I mean, there's, there's always bad eggs. That's, you know, let's call it what it is. There's always bad eggs. If you had a hundred estate agents in the room, I'm sure that 5% are terrible or dodgy or liars or whatever it may be. There's probably going to be a percentage yeah. that are not very good and they're not very good estate agents. But if you got a hundred footballers in a room or a hundred, you know, solicitors in a room, there's going to be a percentage that are, yeah, yeah exa exactly. There's always going to be a percentage that unfortunately kind of drag it down for the, the rest of us effectively. And that is fine. That's human nature. Not everyone's, you know, 10 out of 10 golden child sort of thing. But I think that you're absolutely right. And I think that where estate agency is taking a step forward with the sort of personal brand, loan estate agency sort of thing, is there is less reliance on you're an estate agent and you work for this banner. Yeah. And you fall underneath this banner and, oh, that's a faceless company and I don't like them because of X, Y, and Z. Actually, when you're dealing with Chris Webb Estates, Chris is a good guy. He's hardworking. Does it work out every time? No, but his communication is 10 out of 10. Always lets us know what's going on and he kind of keeps us informed. So it's far more of a personal connection these days rather than a faceless, you are Countrywide or you are Connells or you are whatever it may be above the door that is quite easy to throw mud at and go, I just get past the post. I've got no idea who I'm dealing with. You've got one point of contact, like them, hate them, whatever. But you should know that actually that is where the buck stops with those people. And they're trying to do the best possible to work for you because ultimately their life re relies on it with regard to their income yeah. coming to their business. And that property, if they don't sell your property and do a good job for you, then they bring in no income. And that is an issue. Massive issue. Yeah. Uh, so if you're an estate agent, that's why you need to refer to mortgage advisor and financial services Absolutely. to earn some extra money. It's if it does fall Absolutely. through, at least you've got a stream coming in. Absolutely right. In the same way that I diversified off of LinkedIn, you need to diversify your income. So you haven't just got one income, you've got multiple incomes. And in, in a tough marketplace, you will thank yourself down the line. When it's in a good marketplace, you're selling everything really quickly. You think, oh, I'm earning loads of money from this main source. And, oh, I get a bit from mortgages. That's okay. But trust me, with the market tightens up and it tightens up a bit further, you'll thank your lucky stars. You're getting a thousand pounds in per month. You think to yourself, actually, that pays for my mortgage or actually that pays for my license fee or whatever you need to pay on a monthly basis. Yeah. So if in doubt, diversify as much as you possibly can. Yeah. And you know what? People can, you can go on holiday and go, everyone worries when they're self-employed going on holiday don't they oh no i need to can't take a week out of the business well actually you've still got your income coming in from that um and your bills are covered yeah. absolutely right because you know we don't pay for joe joe's there they're not on holiday working hard and slaving away <laughs> that sort of thing while you're on the beach somewhere That's so it. there you go thanks very much joe. i'm on the hamster wheel i'm running this fast yeah. again. <laughs> never ending yeah <laughs> i love it uh is there anything else you think of chris we covered everything i think haven't we I think we've done a pretty good section there. So I think the, the biggest thing for me is that people just ask the question and engage with people about financial services. Okay. It is it is surprisingly easy to get financial services appointments if you ask enough people. So it, it is a numbers game. You don't need to be the wolf of Wall Street at conversing financial services. Because if you talk to 100 people over a month period or two month period, some of those will trip over and fall in your lap and go, actually, I do need to speak to a mortgage advisor. Yeah. Now you've brought that up. And you think, cool, great, that's, 200 quid or whatever I earned off the back of it that I wouldn't have got anyway. Thank you very much for 30 seconds or 10 seconds worth of questioning. That is money well spent and time well spent. But just ask the question. It is, you know, that is the biggest thing. So get over the fear. As I said, it's scarier to ask them to walk around their house and see where they sleep at night yeah. than it is to see if you can save them some money. So just ask and you'll be surprised how many people actually go, yeah, actually, I would be interested in that. Brilliant, Chris. On that, I'll, uh, we'll stop there. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks for coming on again and, and another great podcast. You're more than welcome. I'm sure we'll, we'll make it the, uh, the trilogy at some point, I'm sure. Definitely. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> more than welcome. Thank you, Joe.